Porter fading away on the baseline. Nothing but net. But they'll switch back. Little heat check. Oh! Wow. Otto Porter looks at the Phoenix bench and says, I'm not with you guys. Rain back to Porter. Heat check. Why not? Otto Porter! That is correct. That is Otto Porter Jr. cooking the Phoenix Suns in what was their biggest game of the season. The same Otto Porter Jr. that Golden State signed for a vet minimum this offseason. The same Otto Porter Jr. that only closed out the game because the Warriors were missing this many combined points. Yep, that's right. Missing a combined 70 points, facing a fully fully healthy Phoenix Suns team that were entering the game with the best record in the NBA, the Golden State Warriors came into Phoenix and spoiled Christmas. And it's this exact reason why the NBA has no answer for the Golden State Warriors right now. Because let's be honest, if the reigning Western Conference champions can't stop Otto Porter Jr. and Gary Payton II, how are they supposed to stop this man? Play corner three. Or these two guys? Steph thought about that from the hash mark. I mean, let's not forget the last time the Warriors and Suns had matched up before this game, this happened. And this was, again, a Warriors team without Klay Thompson and James Wiseman. But I want to talk about what makes this team so special right now and how they are consistently able to win games even without all of their best players. I talked about how many points the Warriors were missing against Phoenix. But it's a good thing that Golden State currently have the best defense in the NBA, and that defense wasn't going anywhere against Phoenix. You guys remember when everyone was saying Macau Bridges was the answer for Stephen Curry? Well, let's see if they keep the same energy with what the Warriors defense was doing to the Phoenix Suns backcourt, because those guys were struggling, and it was the versatility of the Warriors defense that was really on display. You had Gary Payton the second forcing back-to-back -back crucial turnovers. You had Jonathan Kaminga. Jonathan Kaminga was chasing Chris Paul around screens and denying him shots in the fourth quarter. Even Quindary Weatherspoon. No, I don't blame you if you have no idea who he was because in his first minutes for the Warriors, he played some good defense on Chris Paul. You had all of these guys and of course the quarterback of the defense, Draymond Green, making it all possible and clamping up the Phoenix Suns. But before we talk about the defense more specifically, which I will do, I want to talk about this man. He left that one on the front rim. Oh, GP2 detonating at the rim. Yep, Gary Payton the second has now started the last two games with Wiggins and Paul out and he's been nothing short of incredible. When JP came out a few weeks ago and said, I obviously don't shoot like Steph Curry, but I do everything else elite, there were some people that laughed at him and thought he was joking or he wasn't being serious. But I'm going to tell you, that is no joke, because in his two games as a starter, he is now averaging 18 points and 5 rebounds a game on 60% from the field. Oh, and he's shooting 6 of 11 on threes as well. So maybe he wasn't telling the full truth in that quote when he said he couldn't shoot like Steph. But what the Warriors have been able to do with GP2 is exploit teams' defensive schemes versus Steph. Yes, it starts with Steph and Curry, of course. Just watch here against Memphis. Steven Adams meets Steph at the three-point line off a screen, which leaves a rolling loony running towards Ja Morant, who was forced to rotate off to cover the paint. And the man he had to rotate off, GP2, slides in for an easy bucket. Here's another example. Steven Adams again presses up to avoid a Steph 3, which again leaves space for Looney, who again, <laughs> spoiler alert, finds Gary Payton the seconds, who finishes at the rim. Now we know teams always step up on Steph with their bigs, which leaves space in the middle of the floor. And instead of opting for corner threes, GP is often cutting straight to the rim and attacking, not settling for threes, getting to the bucket and taking advantage of the pressure Steph Curry creates on the defense. But the thing is, what has made GP so good recently is he's not only finishing at the rim like he always has been able to do, but in the situations where he can't attack, he's knocking down open threes and he's showing off his versatility as a scorer. We know what he can do defensively, but as a scorer. The thing is, this isn't even the best part about what GP2 has been able to do. And I'm not talking about his defense, 
I'm talking about the little things he does on offense when the ball is not in his hands. Here he is trailing Draymond Green on a missed layup. He then tips the ball up in the air and helps on the double team, which forces a turnover and creates a layup for the Warriors. And then on this occasion, he again keeps the ball alive off a missed shot, skying high over some big bodies inside and forcing two free throws for Kevon Looney. There are countless examples, but these are just two of them in which GP2's hustle and athleticism forces points that otherwise wouldn't be there for Golden State. But if you guys want to know the real difference between Golden State this year and last, this is it. This is the real difference. We know how often teams love to double team Stephen Curry or step up on screens, but this year Golden State are making them pay. Against Phoenix, the Warriors were 8 of 10 from the field on Steph double teams, and it's a combination of open threes and dunks, which had the second best defense in the league completely stumped with how to defend the dubs. So if you can't successfully double team Stephen Curry with the Warriors missing 70 combined points worth of scoring and one of the greatest greatest shooters of all time, and you definitely can't defend him in single coverage, we've seen that, then what exactly can you do? Anyways, we'll let other teams try to figure out what they're going to do defensively to the Warriors. I want to talk about the defense of the Warriors because that is what has been so special. This is a team that is connected from 1 through to 15. Literally every person who steps foot on that court for the dubs this season knows exactly what they need to do defensively. Now for these next clips, all I want you to do is pay attention to the scoreboard on these clips and just watch. With the game in the balance down the stretch, here's what transpired against statistically the second best clutch team in the league. Here's the first example. Chris Paul is being guarded by Draymond Green. He brings up DeAndre Aiden to force the switch onto Kevon Looney, who steps up and forces an immediate turnover. The next possession, Devin Booker tries to collapse the Warriors' defense and kick out to an open Jay Crowder, but Otto Porter Jr. uses his length and quick instincts to contest the shot and force a miss. They always seem to make the right decisions on both ends of the floor, and that's only going to improve as they get back more high IQ players like Clay Thompson, Iguodala, Wiggins, and Jordan Paul, just to name a few. But there's one more thing I want to touch on before I end the video, potentially the scariest part of this all. The Warriors are still playing this guy as a backup. Yeah, the poor man's Fred Van Vliet is still getting minutes, and in this game, he was a negative 8 in 8 minutes. Why is this important? Because when Klay Thompson returns, the Warriors will then give Jordan Poole a chance to run the second unit as the primary ball handler, and the doubles will go from shielding their eyes every time Chris Chioza tries to make a play to having a 20 point per game stud coming off the bench alongside some other serious, serious talent all playing as reserves. The one weakness from their game against Phoenix will be eradicated. Now, if you made it to the end of the video, you must have enjoyed it somewhat. Drop a like in the video if you can, that would help out a ton. Subscribe to the channel. Merry Christmas. Have a great day.